Just like family Thinking of you Top notch agents Always say can do Life is good here In this video we will cover building new versus buying a fixer upper as well as construction costs and hidden fees and finally new California building requirements. We'll also cover features of the home like solar, fire suppression, sprinklers, windows, decks, electrical and more. Happy house hunting. Like if it was a double hung window they would both move. Most houses have sliders but I was kind of thinking if you're standing here and you're doing the dishes it'd be nice not to have anything in the way. Plus all the fresh air. Same thing with the stove. If the stove is on you could pull up the window and let the steam out. Mm -hmm. Get some air. Mm -hmm. And we have an eight foot slider here and here again we have our big beam holding it up. The general rule is for every foot of door you need an inch of lumber. So the rule here would be eight foot, you need at least a six by eight. Mm. But a lot of times they'll use 12 bys because they'll set all the windows at that height. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a beautiful lake view. We're gonna do some kind of Trex deck, which doesn't require a lot of maintenance because we're in an area of sun and water constantly. I'm, I would like to do the cable as for the... So you can see... Through, through it, it, yeah. Through the, and then talk to us about the building code for what are those vertical the styles or the rails the railing yeah yeah you have to you, the pickets a baby, a baby can't put their head through it or something like that you ha the minimum is uh, I mean the maximum part is four inches it used to be it used to be bigger and it keeps getting smaller and smaller because something keeps happening. But right now they say a spear, a four inch spear can't go through it. A lot of times I use a two by four for spacing and just put them at three and a half. Mm -hmm. But you can see it also takes up your view right. as a cable doesn't. And uh, that's something to think about, especially when you have a nice view you want to portray. Right. And then. Yeah, I see a lot of houses where they've got this beautiful lake view, but it's just all walls. There's no windows or doors. and you know, you're doing your dishes, but you're looking back the other way. You're not looking out at the at the view, or the master bedroom doesn't look out at the view. And those are all things that you know my buyers always they want that view and they want to maximize the view. Especially when you spend so much time at the kitchen sink. Right. And then also the glass is this is all dual pane. In the old days, it was single pane, and this is tinted. The tint keeps the UV rays down, which you know make your furniture fade and stuff and then any window that is within 18 inches of a doorway has to be tempered glass because you might slam the door and break it anything that's in 18 inches of the floor area has to be tempered glass so there are a lot of laws and restrictions but it's all number one safety that's what we're trying to do is keep everybody safe yeah. now these these joists that come out from underneath the floor to the deck how far do those run under the floor? The rule is three to one. So these come out four feet, so they're going back 12. Gotcha. Three, so they go back in the floor and you can see how it counterbalances. And these are 16 inches on center. And they're also pressure treated because they're going to be exposed to the weather, right. which is pretty critical around this area. Right. And I also did on the outside, I did concrete siding, which is also fire resistant. But I found once you paint the concrete siding, it never goes, the paint will last 15, 20 years. Because paint, uh, concrete's porous, and the paint can actually get in and bite. So that, that makes me think of some, another question. Recently, there's been some changes in the building code as far as fire sprinkler systems, mandatory solar. Can you speak to those? those types of things? Sure, as of 2000, as in 2020, the new law is all new homes have to have sprinklers. And basically what that is, is a, it's a water system with the sprinklers in the ceiling. If they feel any heat at all, they will go off and water down the whole house. The other thing it makes me think, what happens when these things accidentally go off? There's gonna be a lot of insurance claims. You know, if somebody literally just goes up there and puts a lighter underneath it, it will go off. It's well, and, and also too, you're going to have to have plumbing up in the ceiling. So what type of plumbing do they use up there and how long is that rated to last before that might cause a leak? Um, plumbing, well, 
when I started it was all galvanized, then we went to copper, now we have something called PEX plumbing, which is an amazing new plastic product that can swell up ten times its size and keeps going back and all they literally do is they swell it, they put a coupling on it and it comes back and holds itself. Wow. And the plumbing's pretty pretty amazing. It allows you instead of having a water run you can have a manifold where the water goes into one manifold and now all the water comes out evenly. Mm. A lot of times somebody will say, don't flush the toilet, I'm in the shower and you hear him screaming because now all the cold water is in the toilet. And then uh, like the other thing you said, solar is also required now. You have to have part of your, all new houses have to have some kind of solar in them or set up in the box for future solar. Which is a wave of the future, especially with all our fires and the rolling blackouts, which makes a lot of sense. That's a good point too. I've got another question about solar. So I've, I've heard that you can have a solar system on your roof that feeds into the house and kind of into the PG&E grid, but you can also have battery banks as well. Yeah. Um, I've also heard that if you don't have the battery banks and PG&E cuts the power and you have the solar, it actually won't power the house. Is that right? or? That is right. Okay. You have the solar is great and most solar systems what they're doing is they're when you're not using the electricity during the daytime when you're at work you're feeding the electric back to the electric company and they're giving it to people that can use you get credit for it and then upon you using it the, you know they credit you back but when all the power goes out and you don't have any batteries there's no way they can give you power right. so it's kind of a catch-22 and the batteries, you know, as we all know, they keep getting better and better and better. Um, now talking about utilities, we had talked earlier about the cost of hooking up to the city water, the city sewer, and PG&E. So tell us about what those costs are like when you're looking to build something new. Well, in this particular house, we already had a hookup, but still to hook up to the sewer cost me $5,000. Because the house was under 700 square feet, if it, if it was over 700 square feet, then it would have cost me $10,000. So uh, the water was also another $5,000 just for them to put another meter in. So a lot of times the utilities is a pretty big hidden cost. That's the water. And also the electricity can be too because if they don't have a power pole close enough to you or the transformer is big enough to provide the electricity you need, then they will have you upgraded on your dime, which is kind of could be really, really expensive. So finding a piece of property that has all its sewups, uh, hookups can be, it can be worth $30,000. Right. Right. So, you know. um, as far as power to the home itself, I heard recently that you need enough power to install an electric car charging station. It doesn't have to have the charging station, but you need to have the power capacity to have one if someone were to put one in down the road. Do you know anything about that? I'm pretty sure that a 200 amp service, which is on most new houses, in the old days it was 100 amps, but because of all the new appliances, and in fact there's the seven circuits just in a kitchen. Mm. You're supposed to have seven circuits, which is crazy. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm positive, I have a friend that has one, a, a charging system, but I'm not real familiar what the new code requires. Mm. But I'm sure 200 amps would do it because you're just charging, a, again, a battery in a car. Right. Um, now what are some other fees or costs to construction? Um, and, and how much were those, like school impact fees, fire department fees, what, can you talk to, talk to that? Surely. On top of your utilities, upon acquiring the permit, you pay the, for every square foot that you build new, if your building burnt down and you had 500 feet and you added 500 feet, you just pay the 500 feet you added. But for every square foot of building, you pay a dollar to the fire department because if it caught on fire, they're going to come out and put it out for you. Another thing, the way the schools are funded is we pay, I think it's even gone up more. It was 279 a square foot for a, on a new house. I think it's gone up to even $3 or more than that, than that now. So before you even start building, you could spend $30,000 on the utilities. You could spend another, 
you, now that you're required to have an engineer and all this other you could spend another 20 or 30 you could spend fifty thousand dollars before you get to drive a nail which is really a hidden cost that's why it's so popular for people to want to find something old to fix up because now all those costs are gone you're already hooked up and that's why you can't find them everybody wants them right and what i've found too in just doing the real estate industry is there's not a lot of people buying vacant land because like you say with the school fees fire fees utility fees and then all the uh you know fire suppression sprinkler systems solar engineer the building costs engineer costs by the time you're done for just a, an average home average amenities what do you think per foot that might cost at, at the end of the day I have never really broken it down per foot, but that's a good question. Because I've, I've kind of heard in Lake County it's, you know, 250 per foot, and that can change obviously if you're doing granite versus, you know, yeah. a less expensive material. So then over over the hill in Sonoma County after the Tubbs fire, 300 to 400 dollars a foot to build uh, a, a new home or rebuild a new home. And a lot of people didn't have the adequate insurance to replace their home because I don't think the insurance companies realized how much the cost of everything went up, right. which is just tremendous. So that's a good lesson. My fiance and I just bought a home and we, we got a quote from the insurance company and then we asked for extra insurance so that you know we were going to be covered if the house did, if it was a complete loss. Because I've heard that too from a lot of people that lost their homes they're insured for what the replacement cost used to be and not what they are what it is today yeah that's so you know so let's just say it costs you two hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars a foot to build new for a, a basic home you can go out and buy something existing in new condition or remodel for about two hundred dollars a foot so people aren't really buying land to build spec homes or or things like that whereas you used to be able to to make have some instant equity if you could sell it for 200 or 250 a foot, but it costs you 150 a foot to build, right. it's kind of hard to make to make a profit doing that. That's why those old fixer uppers are worth so much. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's the funny thing about it. Even the houses in Marin or the house, all houses are built the same. It's how you finish it. You know, do you want formica or do you want granite? Do you want fiberglass? Do you want tile? And so they're all, all inside the walls are all the same. The electrical is the same. The plumbing is pretty much the same. You know, you can up, you can have solar plumbing. And you can upgrade of a lot of things, but the basics are the basics in a house. So the building craze kind of slowed down a little bit, but I still think everything in our Lake County is cheap. You can buy anything here and make money. You know, what you owe today, you own tomorrow. That's a good old saying. I like that saying. I use it a lot. And I'm really curious too because our, our cost of housing in Lake County now is still below construction cost. You would think that that's going to put pressure on prices to rise to at least get it to what it costs to build if there's a, a demand for housing and just a limited supply. But we'll see. Everything's supply and demand. It's like family thinking of you. Top notch agents always say can do. Life is good here.